The Sentinels are robots developed by Tyrion Lannister. I mean, Bolivar Trask, and are specifically built to hunt down mutants. These Sentinels are about the same height as a tall giraffe, which is 20 feet. These Sentinels are equipped with machine guns, electromagnetic guns, flamethrowers, and of course, jetpacks. Because of course, death machines are not cool enough unless they are flying death machines. And luckily, we do not have flying Sentinels that are hunting us down at the moment, but we do have some cool robots like Curatus that could totally turn into death machines if someone accidentally put some weapons on them without anyone else knowing. The Sentinel Sentinels and X-Men are not only deadly, but they're also smart and become self-aware. And in reality, we do have robots that are kind of self-aware. And by that, I mean that they can learn how to adapt, they know what they look like, and they can even self-replicate. And we also have machines that are really, really smart as well. Like Watson, you know, that robot that took our Jeopardy title away. But we have yet to develop a robot that is both self-aware and intelligent. And you know what? I think that's kind of a good thing, because I don't want to be exterminated by robots at the moment. I don't know about you, but that's my personal opinion. If humanity was on the brink of extinction, all we would have to do is invent a way to time travel, create a superhero that pretty much can't die, send his consciousness back in time and stop the robots from ever being created. Yep, we'd be screwed. Consciousness was originally thought to exist only in the frontal lobe of the brain. But then we found this guy. His name is Phineas Gage. See, he looks like a pretty normal dude, doesn't he? Well, he is, except for the part where he had an iron pipe go through his head in 1848. Yes, this actually happened. And not only did he survive this injury, he nearly fully recovered from it. His personality was said to have changed after the incident, which it probably should because, you know, getting a pipe through the brain might you know, hurt a little bit. So what am I getting at here? Well, it's that as far as we know, consciousness is spread throughout several regions in the brain. Meaning that for Wolverine's consciousness to be transported back through time, he would pretty much need an entire brain transplant while being transported back through time. So yes, that would mean that Wolverine would need a time-traveling neurosurgeon. Oh, I really want that job. But for Wolverine's brain to travel back in time, it would need to be moving really, really, really fast. Like faster than light fast. According to the laws of physics, the faster you are moving, the slower time moves around you. And if you can reach the speed of light, time will actually stop. But in order to accelerate Wolverine's brain faster than light, we would need more energy than there is in the universe right now. So probably not gonna happen. But fear not, time travel fans, because we have another way to teleport Wolverine back through time. And that would be to get him really, really fat actually. This is because the more massive and dense an object is, the more it warps space and time itself. So if Wolverine were to eat 9.25 non-nillion Big Macs, he could theoretically be massive enough to dig a hole through space and time. Yeah, I calculated that in my spare time. An alternative to eating 9.25 non-nillion Big Macs is to jump into a black hole and see what happens. Although, he might have a little bit of trouble surviving the infinite gravity and the vacuum of space and the lethal radiation. You know. The minor details. Anyways, thank you for watching Jaxi. Hit this annotation if you're really awesome. And for now, try not to get killed by any robots, and I'll see you next time.